Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Facebook abandons Aquila program. FAA grants exemption to Yamaha for phaser remotely piloted helicopter. And FAA surveys commercial drone operators. Hi, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Facebook has abandoned its efforts to use a high-altitude solar-powered drone to relay internet connectivity to people living in remote areas without such service. Facebook began its efforts in 2014. On its blog, the company said it developed an aircraft known as Aquila, as well as other technologies to deliver wireless internet connectivity to remote areas. In 2016, one of its aircraft suffered a wing failure while attempting to land, which the NTSB attributed to strong winds. The flight was the first for the full-scale test aircraft. The company continued its development and conducted additional successful test flight but now is giving up on the effort and closing the plant in Bridgewater in the UK. The company noted going forward will continue to work with partners like Airbus on HAPS connectivity generally and on other technologies needed to make the system work, like flight control computers and high-density batteries. On the policy front, we'll be working on a proposal for 2019 World Radio Conference to get more spectrum for HAPS and will be actively participating in a number of aviation advisory boards and rulemaking committees in the U.S. and internationally. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Highlighting Jacksonville's growing investment in autonomous transportation technology, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International is launching a local chapter that is focused on unmanned and robotic vehicle systems, such as drones, driverless cars, and unmanned boats and submarines. The AUVSI Jacksonville Satellite Chapter's kickoff event is scheduled for July 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It will be held at the Fire Academy of the South in Jacksonville. Swiss Air Navigation Service provider SkyGuide and drone airspace management platform developer AirMap have successfully demonstrated Swiss use space services nationwide in Switzerland. The demonstration was part of the Drone Innovators Network event put on by the World Economic Forum in collaboration with the Federal Department of Environment, Transport, Energy and Communications and Present Switzerland. SkyGuide is the first to deploy U-Space services nationwide. U-Space is Europe's vision for the digital infrastructure to support safe and secure access to European skies for millions of drones. Kansas State University Polytechnic Campus has received a waiver from the FAA to fly unmanned aircraft systems beyond the line of sight. It's the first such waiver granted to a university by the agency. The FAA Certificate to Kansas State Polytechnic's Applied Aviation Research Center waives the rules regarding visual sight of aircraft operations by the pilot and visual observers. This allows Kansas State Polytechnic to conduct research and operations where pilots and observers can no longer see their aircraft. UTM services from AirMap have been selected by Top X Gun to be integrated into the company's industry-leading autopilot systems for drones. AirMap services will significantly enhance the Top X Gun user experience and allow its customers to operate safely and in compliance anywhere in the world. The AirMap services that will be integrated into Top X Gun autopilot systems include geo-awareness with airspace advisories, weather data, and dynamic flight restrictions, flight management including flight planning tools and compliance briefings, and deconfliction with real-time telemetry and manned traffic alerts. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. The FAA has granted an exemption to Yamaha Motor Corporation, 
to begin using as phaser remotely piloted helicopter for select commercial agricultural spraying operations. The phaser is Yamaha's latest helicopter to receive FAA approval in the U.S. Following the RMAX model, which is currently being operated in agricultural applications in California's Napa Valley, Yamaha provides direct services for fungicide aerial application on wine grapes in Napa Valley and is now planning to introduce the phaser into operations starting in June. The Yamaha phaser features a number of improvements to previous models, including 50% increased payload capacity, improved control using a newly designed transmitter and new control system, cleaner exhaust emissions and quieter operation thanks to the fuel-injected four-stroke engine. While current RMAX and phaser operation requires certified and licensed Yamaha employees due to FAA and state regulations, Yamaha is also seeking to type certify its new Phaser R model, which would allow Yamaha to lease a unit to other certified and licensed operators. The Phaser R model retains the strong base functionality of the original Phaser model, but with easier operation and further improvements in spraying accuracy. It features a 32-liter agrochemical payload, allowing the spraying of approximately 4 hectares without reloading chemicals or refueling. If you've registered a commercial drone, the FAA wants to hear from you. On June 19, the FAA sent a questionnaire to everyone who has registered a commercial drone, more formally an unmanned aircraft system, for anything but recreational or hobby use. Most of these owners fly their drones for commercial purposes, but the survey population also includes government departments and other users. Hobbyists are not included in the survey. The goal is to collect information on drone flight activities under the FAA's small drone rule, data that will help the FAA improve the services it delivers to the UAS community. Responses to the questionnaire are voluntary and entered 100% electronically. The survey will take about 10 minutes to complete. The questions include areas such as number of drones registered, number and types of missions completed in 2017, primary locations where the operator flies, and types of waivers requested. The survey also asks how operators want to get information about drone-related issues from the FAA, and how satisfied they are with the news channels they use now. The questionnaire is completely anonymous, so responses cannot be attributed to an individual. Hello fellow pilots, I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. Well, we're headed off to Oshkosh for Air Venture and we're really looking forward to it. Martha and I are going to be making a bunch of talks there. And we hope you'll come by and say hi to us. We'd love to meet you. And by the way, stay tuned right here to Prop Wash. We're going to be making some exciting announcements direct from Air Venture. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.